somebody shout a praise this morning. What a powerful. Come on, make a great praise ring in this place. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless you today. Lord, we bless you today. Lord, we praise you today. Bless the wonderful name. Hallelujah. Does anybody believe that that's more than a song? It's a declaration of faith. I believe it's time for the church to believe that God can do anything, that God can do everything, that nothing is impossible with our God. Do you believe that? And so we boldly proclaim healing over your body. We boldly proclaim everything that was spoken through that song over our lives and over our families and over our nation over our world to God be the glory how many of you are hungry on this Pentecost Sunday for more of the Holy Spirit in your life give him a warm welcome at all of our campuses give him a warm welcome at all of our campuses would you do that praise the name of Jesus God bless you you may be seated I want to welcome all of you here and thank you for that great worship today it blessed me. There's something about praising the Lord that will, that will just build your faith if you'll do it. If you'll do more than a music set, but you will sing to the Lord and sing what He promises, then His presence inhabits our praise. And I'm so glad to be in church on this Pentecost Sunday. This is not a normal Sunday. This is Pentecost Sunday when we remember 50 days after Passover today how Jesus bled and died and rose from the dead and then sent the promise of the Holy Spirit to Jerusalem and the church was birthed. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and that began what we are today. And he said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Can you say amen, somebody? If you have your Bibles, I'm going to let you turn with me to the book of John chapter 2. While you're turning there, I want us to have a little bit of a praise party because last Sunday through the week, you crossed the threshold of, of miracle territory. And we had an amazing family who are not here in our congregation or at any of our campuses, except one of the biggest campuses, I guess the biggest campus that we have, no doubt about it, is our online campus. We have had during the pandemic, now over 10,000 people join our online church. It's kind of crazy. And with all of that in mind, one of the viewers that started worth watching, uh, they gave a million dollar gift and then a Another half a million dollar gift, I think it was. Or maybe it was 500, 500 a million. They've given so much, I can't keep up with it. Amen. I mean, that's, that's just unreal. And then recently, about, I think it was about six weeks ago, they called and they said, uh, we want to, we heard about the, you know, we'd mentioned the campus that we're buying in downtown Atlanta. And we mentioned the amount and they said, well, we'd like to do about half of that, but I'll never forget what the, what the person said. They said as a couple, we won't skin in the game. And, uh, they said, if your congregation will match it, we'll give up to $4 million. And so I came back that Sunday. I said, I promise you they'll give it. If I have to shake them down every week, I, they go, we're going to get $4 million out of that crowd somehow or another. And, uh, and uh, you know, all the rumors about us, I was about to make them happen. Amen. <laughs> Parking place, it's going to cost you a hundred this Sunday. Amen. <laughs> Whatever I got to do. But you know what is so amazing? That you incredible people in the last six weeks have given over $4 million. And now with that combined gift, that is an $8 million miracle. Unbelievable the things we can dream with and do for the glory of God. And I'm going to be talking about it coming 
in the near future about what we're going to do with these extra dream, this dream fund. Amen. And I'm so excited about it because it's all about people. It's all about souls. It's all about the kingdom of God. And we don't have words to say thank you enough to the amazing people that I'm talking to at all of our campuses and all of you online. We love you. We appreciate you. And we are humbled by your trust and your generosity in this ministry. And I know I speak for the whole team here. So one more time, can we, can we just give a humble and great, grateful praise to God for this miracle? I've, I've been preaching 30 something years. I've never experienced anything like that ever in our wildest dreams and to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. I want to go today for a few minutes to the book of John. You can start my time clock now that, that none of that was on my time. That was John chapter two, verse two. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. Verse three. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said, verse seven to them, fill the water pot with water and they filled them up to the brim. Verse six says that there were six water, water pots of stone. In verse 10, finally, and he said to them, this is the governor of the feast. Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior but you have kept the good wine until now. Some translations say you kept the best for last. And this was the beginning of the signs Jesus did. This was the first miracle. This was the beginning of his earthly ministry right there at the wedding of Cana. I want to begin a series today. I'm going to be preaching next Sunday, which is Memorial Day weekend. We're going to do some very special things to remember and, and honor our veterans, but I'll be preaching this Sunday, next Sunday, and the next Sunday. And I'm going to stay right on what I'm going to share today. What the Holy Spirit wants to do for you. What the Holy Spirit wants to do for you. In Hebrew culture, there was a great deal of importance placed upon the marriage. It was not a light thing or something you would do at the spur of the moment. It was a serious, serious agreement and covenant that people entered into when it came to marriage. So much so that if you wanted to divorce someone, um, the divorce had to go all the way. If you got engaged, this, this is amazing. If you got engaged and decided to break up, you had to go through a formal writing of divorce to even break up from being engaged. If the, if the engagement was that serious, you can imagine the importance they placed upon marriage. And marriage then and now has, is, is, is not quite the same in the Hebrew culture because it was more than a legal ceremony. It was more than even a spiritual occasion but part of the marriage in the Hebrew culture, especially in Jesus' day and even to this day, is it was a celebration. A, a, uh, a marriage was a party. It lasted seven days. People came in. It was a community event. It was a big deal. It was one of the most important things that could happen. Huge celebration, huge party. And what's so interesting about this wedding, and you read it, it said, and Jesus was invited to the party. Jesus Christ, who had not yet began his miracle ministry, received an invitation in the presence of God and not get the benefit of God until circumstances arise that only God can handle. I mean, think about it. All these people, they're focused on the bride and the groom. They're focused on the governors here. Look at the dignitaries at the main table. Wow, wow, look at the wedding party. Look at their outfits. And Jesus was there and nobody's paying him any attention. Sometimes God has a way of 
working circumstances so that you come into an awareness of who is with you. Because you don't always recognize who you have with you until you get in a situation that only he can fix. Isn't it funny that something can happen and all of a sudden you need him? And your whole attitude changes. Up until that point, no big deal. Jesus and that little crazy bunch of people that go around with him, his little entourage, they're here and they could care less. They've been into it for days. But when you need to develop an appetite for him, God knows how to make you use circumstances to make you need him. Nobody was praying at this party. Nobody was seeking God at this party. Nobody had time for any of his scriptures or teachings at this party. But right there in the middle of their celebration and their wild party, God knows how to get your attention. It ought to make us tremble when we think about the times that he was there and we didn't even know he was at our party. He was there at the dog track. He was there at the, you want me to get real plain? If you don't act right, I'll get real plain. He, he was there. It would shock you. He doesn't just go to church. He goes to parties. He goes to places that you wouldn't dream and you didn't even know that he was with you. But the only reason you're sitting where you are and you're still here is because he was there. And, and notice what happened. They were having a party, but they, but they ran out of wine. The scripture says it very plain and they had no wine. They're dancing, their music is wild, they're, they're lit, they're having a big time, and nobody has noticed that they've run out of wine. Wine represents sustainable joy in the scripture. There's momentary joy in sin, there's momentary pleasure in sin for a season, but there is no sustainable joy in the party life that the world offers you. They had merriment of heart for a few minutes, but something had started going out of the party. Something, they were trying to be happy, but already something was getting lower and lower and lower about the party. They were still celebrating. Do you know what it is? Do you remember when you were in the world? And do you remember when, it's, when something went out of it? <laughs> I'm going to preach in a minute if y'all get Do you remember? Maybe some of y'all been in church too long and that's your problem. But the people were still celebrating. But the party has run out of wine. They're still laughing but it's not that funny anymore. They're still acting like they're having a good time, but down on their insides, they really had rather just go home. They're still in the arms of somebody that they thought would be enough, but now the wine has gone out of the party. That job that you couldn't wait to get that you thought would be enough, but the wine goes out of the party. That car, that house that, that you just knew if you could get that, that you would absolutely feel fulfilled, but the wine goes out of that party. That, that career, that paycheck, if I could ever get to a certain number there, I know that, that that would be sustainable joy for the rest of my life. But I don't care what you get that the world has to offer. The wine goes out of the party. The party is not what you thought it was. It's flat. Sooner or later, it goes dull if Jesus is not the center of your joy. I don't care how, how much you get. I don't care what you have. And what I love about Jesus 
is the extreme patience. He'll just sit in the corner while you carry on. He's sitting over there. Can you see him? He's sitting over there watching you make the fool, just acting crazy, talking big, cussing, saying his name in vain, puffing, smoking, anything, everything. A miracle. He didn't plan to do anything. He said, my time has not yet come. But this was an emergency. And then all of a sudden, the party crowd is talking and saying things like, God, if you're up there, I wish you'd do me a favor. I believe that we're living in a time when the church has come to the world's party. And their party has run out of wine. We've been overlooked. We've been not noticed. We've been ridiculed. We've been made fun of. In history, we've been burned at the stake, thrown in snake pits, fed to lions, and, bur and burned alive. But we're still at the party. We've been mocked by Hollywood and everybody else, but we're still at the party. And the spotlight is finally going off what the world has to offer. And suddenly people are finding out in the midst of all the brokenness that we've all been through in the last year with everything that we've dealt. This is a thing that only Jesus can fix. Now that we've got more addicts than we've got answers. Now that we've got more broken homes than fixed homes. Now that we've got more crisis centers than we've ever had and more suicide lines that are jammed than we've ever had, the world has run out of wine. They don't have enough drugs to keep them high enough. They don't have enough liquor to keep them drunk enough to hide their broken heart and their emptiness that they're feeling. And the spotlight now must come on the church and our message must be Jesus high and lifted up. Now it's time for the church to step into the spotlight of a broken, addicted, hurting, hit bottom world, depressed and fearful and worried and unsure. And say only Jesus can give you what you're missing. Notice what Jesus did in verse 6. The Bible said that he said, bring me the six pots of ceremonial water. The ceremonial water was that which they used, these, these pots, stone pots, and they had to bring them. And he said, fill them with water, fill them to the brim. They would wash themselves before they went into the holy place or into the tabernacle, even the outer court. They had to wash at these ceremonial jars of water. And Jesus said, I want you to get those old religious pots and I want you to fill them with water to the brim. Fill them with water to the brim. God uses things to make things. God never makes things rarely in Scripture without something else. He asked the widow woman, what do you have in the house? And she said, I have a little pot of oil. And then he uses things to make more things. God can take old pots and work new miracles. God can take something used and abused and make a miracle out of the mess. God can stir up, and I believe he's about to stir up in old pots, meaning churches and denominations that are just religious sinners. He's about to put new miracles in old pots. And we got to get back to preaching that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in my name, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And in my name, you shall speak with new tongues. And in my, didn't he say it? Did he say it? It's time for the old pots to get some new miracles. Jesus said, bring me water and I'll give you wine. Now, usually if you're going to, 
If you're going to make a substance, you need the raw material of that substance. If you want orange juice, you bring oranges and I'll give you orange juice. If you need wine, you bring grapes and I will eventually give you wine. If he had asked for grapes and made it into wine, that would be one thing. But he didn't ask for anything that remotely resembled wine. And he still made it wine. He said, bring me something that in no way looks like what I want it to be. And I'll transform it in my presence from what it is. And it can never on its own become. That's why I said, fill it to the brim. I don't even want one grape in all that water. I want it to the brim. And when you are aware of what you're full of, bring it to me. When you're aware of the fact that you can't do anything to change yourself, to deliver yourself, to help yourself, but you understand that that, that, that six ceremonies, six is the number of man. Six is the number of sin. The book of Revelation, Antichrist, six, six, six. And he said six water pots full of water. When you are aware of what you're full of, come bring it into my presence. Make sure that there's nothing in that pot that can become what I want it to be. Nothing but water. Nothing but water. No holiness. No righteousness in yourself. No, no worthiness in yourself. Full to the brim of nothing but sin. Just as I am without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me. And when you get that, bring it to me. And then the Bible said, he said, and begin to pour it out. I'm going to pour it from vessel to vessel. And I can't explain to you. We're not told. The Bible is ambiguous about exactly how and when it happened. But when they started pouring from one vessel to another, as, as the water got in the presence of Jesus, the water started transforming into wine. That's why we've got to be Really, really serious about getting in the presence of God and not just having a church service. This is not a time to just do church and hear a little talk and have a little song and leave. We must be in the presence of Jesus where transformation takes place. He said, draw it out. See what I can do. As it gets in my presence. Now water is weak. But when it got in the presence of Jesus. That which was weak became strong. Wine is strong. Water is cheap. But when it got in the presence of Jesus. It became wine. And wine is expensive. Water. Water is tasteless. But wine is intoxicating, they tell me, and I don't drink, in case you're wondering. I don't want it. I don't need it. That's between you and God. You better follow the wisdom of this book. But for me, I don't want it in my life. But here's the point. Here's the point. As it God, in his presence, that which was weak became strong. That which had no worth became great value. That which was tasteless became powerful and intoxicating. It all happened from the power of his presence. And then I want you to notice something else. The Bible said, and Jesus said, go serve it to the governor. You ever read that? You know, the honored guest, the, the, the celebrity at the head table. So many times I preached a whole sermon on this many years ago, and I thought about it as I was putting this together this week, that, that 
that so many times we want to we want to reach the butler and we should meaning the down and out but we forget about the up and the in we forget that the person who has prestige and power and wealth and money and, and fame and everything, they, they need it too. And Jesus said, take it to the governor first and let him drink it. Serve him. Touch him. Reach him. He's got a thirst that his power and influence can't feel. He's got a thirst that his wealth and his money can't feel. He's got a thirst that his success and his victory after victory in the world in one arena still leaves him extremely dry and empty in another area of his life. And go give him a taste of what I'm offering him. And I love it because the Bible said that the, the governor knew that the routine at a wedding was to serve the best wine first and after people have well drunk, then you bring the cheap stuff. And the governor had a preconceived idea of what he was being offered was nothing compared to what he had already had. So many people think that what you have and have had in the world is so much better than what the church and Jesus is offering you. But when he tasted it, when he tasted it, he said, wow, this is better than what I expected. This is better than what I've ever had. This is better than anything I have ever tasted. I have never in my life experienced this. This is, I had a preconceived idea that what you were offering me was inferior to what I could get through my own power and my own wealth and my own fame and my own position. I thought that what you offered me was weak and what I had was strong. But now that I've tasted it, This is better than what I thought it was. It has exceeded my expectations. I've never tasted anything like this before. That's, that's, that, that's what's wrong. If we really offer people the blood of Jesus Christ, this wine, he said at the communion meal at the last supper, he said this wine represents my body and my blood. If people ever taste of the power of the Holy Ghost, if people ever taste of the joy of the Lord, the sustainable joy of the Lord, I don't mean it keeps you out of trouble. I mean when you go through trouble, I have a sustainable joy that alcohol can't give me, that drugs can't give me, that money can't give me, that success can't give me. I have a sustainable joy in Jesus that says whether I'm on the mountain or in the valley, whether I'm up or whether I'm down, good times, bad times, I have a sustainable joy. If it's ordinary, it's man. If it's extraordinary, it's God. And he said, this is extraordinary. This is not just life. This is life more abundantly. This is not just wine. It's wine like I've never tasted before. Wow. What Jesus is offering me is so superior to what I had preconceived ideas was so much greater. How do you explain to people the baptism in the Holy Ghost? Anybody been filled with the Holy Ghost just like Acts chapter 2 and spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave you the utterance? Raise your hand if that's happened to you. Raise your hand. That's awesome. That's awesome. Raise your hand high and unashamed. That's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And, and, and just keep your hand up a minute. Throw your other hand up and say, when I tasted that... It was better than anything the world. You know, it, it, it's like a drug. <laughs> I, I mean, I was, I was high, but it wasn't like dope. It was, it, it was more than dope. 
It, 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 it was, I, I was drunk, but I didn't have a hangover. I, I don't, I, it's hard to, ex how do you explain it? It's so frustrating. In the religious world, you know, the old pots, the old religious pots says, yeah, Acts chapter two, the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. It filled all the place where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire set upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them the utterance and the religious pots of water. Sit over here and say, that's not for this day and that's not for this time. That's not for this hour. Then, dear God, this, we need it more now than we've ever needed it. If they needed it then, how much more? And he saved the best for last. He saved the best for this moment. He saved the best wine for the last days. We're not going to Joe's bar. We're going to Joel's bar. And the prophet Joel said, it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Somebody shout, Lord, I need that in my home. It's like wine, but it's better than wine. And he saved the best for last. Jesus told his disciples, go to the upper room. I'm going away. I'm going to heaven. But go to the upper room and tarry. And he said, oh no. Listen to their preconceived ideas. Oh no, you're the best. You're the best. If you leave us, the miracles leave. If you leave us, the signs and wonders. You, you were our comforter. When we got in a storm, you came walking on the water. Peter speaks up and said, when I didn't have no money to pay my taxes, you gave me a fishing hook, a magical fishing hook. And I pulled a fish out of the creek and, and it had a gold thing and it paid your taxes. And what? Well, you're my comforter. You're my provider. You're my healer. You're my deliverer. You're the one who fills me with joy. And now you're leaving? Jesus said, yeah, just go to the upper room and wait. Stay there for 50 days. That's the word 50 is Pentecost. Stay there for 50 days. After Passover. And go party without wine. Because <laughs> they're in the upper room, but there's no hope. There's no Jesus there. And they don't really have, I, I know the Holy Spirit was active, but they had not been filled. So they're in there praising the Lord. Like they're, they're old religious pots. When the anointing of the Holy Ghost doesn't come into a church, all we are is a bunch of silly religious pots full of ourselves, Worried about ourselves focused on ourselves, But when the presence of Jesus shows up, suddenly we get transformed. We lose ourselves, and we become encaptured by the power of his presence. So they go, they go and Jesus says, it's going to be all right. I'm going to send another comforter. And this one will abide with you forever. And it's not going to be one Jesus with two hands and two feet and one mouth and a few miracles here and there. But if you'll get full of what I've saved the best for the last four, if you'll get full on the day of Pentecost, it'll be 120 of you out in the streets and you'll have the same power in my name. I give you the authority and the power. And if you get full of the Spirit and let me transform you, you'll be carriers of my presence and my power and my authority. So they go to Jerusalem and they're having a party without wine. Until the day of Pentecost. And suddenly, I, I got to read it because it's so funny. You say, well, I, I just don't know about that Holy Ghost stuff. What part don't you know about? Every book in this Bible of the New Testament that was written was written by a man who talked in tongues. Because every one of them were in the upper room with the exception of the Apostle Paul. And Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Peter, James, John, all of them. Mary, the mother of Jesus, are you holier than she is, but you don't need the Holy Ghost. 
She needed the Holy Ghost, but you don't need it. It's not for you. You're not interested. No, thank you. That's for radicals. That's for crazy people. That's that weird stuff. Well, aren't you tired of little dead, dry religious pots? Old, old pots need new miracles. I'm ready for revival. I'm ready. I'm ready for it all. I'm not talking about crazy sin. You know me. I'll, put, I'll shut something down quick. But I'm telling you, we better get back to saying, Holy Spirit, we need you. Fill us. Transform us. Listen to this. It's been poured out before. It happened on the day of Pentecost, but he saved the best for last. God's been holding back his best for these last days. 1 Corinthians 14 and 39, forbid not to speak with tongues. There are over 1.7 billion believers worldwide who say, I am a born again Christian and I have experienced Speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives me the utterance. Soon, according to Barna Research, more than half of the worldwide Christians will be tongue-talking, Spirit-filled believers. Globally, the largest denomination is Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, Anglican, and now Pentecostal. Because they have the largest church in the world in Korea. The largest, one of the largest churches, 350,000 in, in, in uh, Bogota, Colombia, spirit field. In Africa, they have a church that is over a million people, spirit field. If it's possible that tongues are of no value to be ridiculed, to be slandered, then why are so many people receiving it? Christians treat speaking in tongues like it's weird doctrine. It's a practice to be avoided. Is If there's something about this experience that the Bible promises will change your life and when He comes in fullness, He gives you a prayer language and a worship language. That will glorify Jesus, magnify, blow him up, make him bigger than he's ever been in your life. If it's of little importance that you speak in tongues and pray in the Spirit, then why was it prophesied about in the Old Testament when Isaiah said, with stammering lips and an unknown tongue, I'll speak to my people? Why was it spoken about by Jesus Christ himself when he said in Mark 16, these signs will follow, they'll speak with new tongues? Why was it released on the day of Pentecost when the church, read Acts chapter 2, you cannot avoid the outpouring of the Spirit in speaking in tongues. Why is it practiced and was practiced by every leader in the early New Testament church? And why is it continuing to be poured out all over the world today? It's because he saved the best for last. And every one of us need to say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Let me get in the power of your presence today and fill me until I pray in the Spirit, until I worship you in spirit and in truth. And when you do, transformation comes and he turns that which is weak into that which is strong. And that which is of little value to the kingdom becomes expensive and powerful and intoxicating. We have nothing without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And it's here right now. I sense it. I feel it. He's the precious Holy Spirit. Stand to your feet at all of our campuses, right there in your home, wherever you are. If you'll just be open, you may be an old religious pot. Nothing wrong with that. But would you be open to God giving a new miracle to an old pot? Anybody open to something brand new? Throw both hands up in the air at every campus. Open your mouth out loud and say, come on, Holy Spirit. I want on the day of Pentecost this Sunday to be filled with the Holy Spirit all over again. Feel me, feel me, feel me. Heal me, deliver through me. I want to be your hands. I want to be your feet. 
You, you had something greater in mind when you sent another comforter. You wanted us to comfort people. You wanted us to heal people in your name. You wanted us to deliver captives. God, we pray for power greater than addiction. We pray for that anointing, God, that's greater than the power of hell that's coming against homes and families. We pray for the power of the Holy Ghost in this church. We pray for revival like we've never dreamed. Souls being saved. Somebody needs that transformation. Your party has run out of wine. But Jesus says, come to me and today I'll turn your water into wine. Just worship him all over this room. Right there where you are at every campus. Just worship Jesus. The Holy Spirit will fill you. Open your mouth and begin to praise him. Begin to honor him. Begin to speak his name. Ask him for the Holy Spirit. Ask him to feel. Ask him to speak for you. Sing it, sing it, sing it. That's it. Sing it, church. I wonder if I could get 120 at every campus that would get out of their seat and come feel the altar section and say, Lord, start it right here. Start, I'll be one of the 120. If you would be one of the 120 that would say, God, I'm hungry for the Holy Spirit. I'm hungry for the moving. I'm ready. Get out of your seat and move to the altar of your church. Just move out. If you're, if you're ready for a new miracle in the old pot. Joy. Sustainable joy. I need 120. Anybody hungry for more? That's where it starts. That's where it happens. That's where it begins. That's where God moves. When you move, God moves. When you hunger, God moves. When you knock, God opens. When you ask, God sends. So hunger, thirst. Lift your hands all over the building and begin to pray as the Spirit gives you the evidence. We're not crazy. This is the promise of the Father, not a denomination. He called it the promise of the Father. Wait and tarry for the promise of the Father. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give me a hundred leaders. Give me a hundred leaders of this church. A hundred leaders. It starts with leaders. Feel me, Holy God. Feel me, Holy God. Pastors at every campus, lay your hands on your people. Lay your hands. Why don't you reach over and pray for somebody around you? Ask God to release miracles through your hands. Ask God to release wine, sustainable joy, deliverance, freedom. This is the way God does it. He uses people. He uses vessels. Pour it out. Pour it out.
lift your hands and sing it one more time. Holy Spirit. The Spirit is our defense. The Spirit, He's the Comforter. Is your heart heavy? He's the Comforter. Call on Welcome Him. Holy Spirit, Comforter. Comforter. I don't want to go through this alone. I can't take it if you're not with me. So come, Comforter. Come, Comforter. He's the Comforter. He's the comfort, and he's here, and he's here. of God, give him your gift and watch him turn it into wine. Watch him take ordinary and turn it into Clap your hands as a warm welcome to the Holy Spirit this morning. Hey, Alan, Alan, Alan and Brother Skelton, Pat, will you come up here? Will you come up here real fast? And Alan, would you come with him? One of the patri matriarchs of this church was Louise Skelton. She went to be with the Lord a couple weeks ago. And if you don't know Hugh Skelton and his son, Alan, they are full-time missionaries. They have started thou several thousand churches. I don't even know how many, hundreds and hundreds. We've been together forever and been involved in Free Chapel forever. And is the answer not the Holy Ghost? Yes, 100% plus. How old are you, Brother Skelton? 91. 91 years old. His son... Alan, Alan, we're so honored to have you here. Normally, he lives with his family in Honduras and has an amazing mission program there. And because of your generosity, we were able to give them last week, a hundred and or week before last, a hundred fifty thousand dollars to go forth. Is that what we gave? Yeah, that's what it was. I'm, I hope I got that right. Amen. That was right. And it's just the beginning because they, they win souls every day. They feed the hungry, clothe the poor, take care. But I just feel like it would be in order if you, general of the faith, would conclude the day of Pentecost at Free Chapel for this service and ask God to fill us like never before with the power of the Holy Spirit. Would you do that? Father, for all these years, you have blessed us with this great experience of being filled. I mean filled, Lord, with the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit. We could never, ever have been able to accomplish what has been done without the touch and the anointing of the great Holy Spirit upon our life and upon the ministry that you've sent us into the world to do. And today, Lord, we give you honor and praise and glory for all that you've accomplished here in Free Chapel and around the world. Oh God, today we lift our hearts in praise and adoration to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And Father, the battle is not over. We're still on the journey, Lord. Still souls out there to reach for the kingdom of God. And Lord, you know we're leaving Monday morning, in the morning, to go back to the mission field to serve you, Lord. So be with us for that great touch of the Holy Spirit and give us souls for the kingdom. And we'll give you the honor and the praise and the glory for you deserve it all in Jesus. 
Precious. Now, now, did you? I, are you going? You're you're leaving for the mission. Where are you going? Going to Honduras. Ninety, one or two. Ninety-one years old, and still got to go ye into all the world. <laughs> Turn to somebody and say, "What's your problem, bud?" Alan, what's God? You got anything on your heart? It's an amazing thing to come into an atmosphere like this when you've lost someone like your mother and how this Holy Spirit that he was talking about just somehow just begins to do something and rejuvenate, re, whatever that word is, do it again. And you don't think about what you've lost. You think about what she's gained and you think about what this message means to so many. You asked me what I wanted to say. I wanted to say, this congregation is blessed because this guy don't hide it. Don't come here if you don't want to face it. God's good, Pastor. Just, just to let you know what you gave, what you deposited by faith is going to put at least 600 roofs on homes that lost their roofs in the two hurricanes we had last year in Honduras. That and provide a tremendous amount of food and give Bibles to those that lost their Bibles. Thank you so much. Love it, love it, love it. The Lord be with you. How many of you will pray for Pastor Hugh and Pastor Allen as they go keep him strong and healthy? Soul, 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 souls. In Jesus' name, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine on you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Take your communion set with you and have it after you eat the buffet or whatever it is you're going to do, have it in your home. We'll have it in the next service. You can go home and watch online and we'll have it in the next service. I didn't get time to get to that, but we'll do it in the next service. I love you all. Ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Next two Sundays, I'm going to be preaching on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I believe we're going to have a breakthrough in major, major ways with people and healings and miracles seeing God move in might and power. It's time. God bless you. Be blessed. Great music today. Great worship today. Wasn't that such a beautiful and powerful so message powerful. this morning? I don't know about you, but the Holy Spirit is strong in this room this yes. morning. And we pray wherever you are that you feel His presence, no matter where you're watching from that your room be filled with his touch and that you feel his touch today. Yeah. And so if you listen to that message and you decided Jesus is for me, I want to have more of that. I want to experience more of his presence and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We want you to text yes to 510-510. We have a new number system. So let's remember that this morning, 510-510. Yes. Text yes this morning if you yes. said yes to Jesus. Yes, and we are celebrating with you. We are so proud of you. Yeah. That is literally the best decision you could have ever made. So we are celebrating right alongside you. And like Mel said, what a powerful yeah. mess. I knew today felt special, but mm -hmm. man, that, that moment was so special. I love Pastor's point about how the world will always run out of wine, whether that's yeah. Literally had the story in the Bible, they ran out of literal wine, but the wine of satisfaction of things in the world, God, it'll, it'll just always, always never satisfy. But the Lord's wine is a never ending well for us yeah. to always pull from and always be strengthened and encouraged by. So just take that little nugget and apply it throughout your week. When yes. Maybe when you feel tempted to do something, tempted to give in to anger, tempted to give in to whatever it may be, remember that the Lord's wine is the wine that yeah. is so satisfying and fulfilling and never ending for you. So just take that and apply that throughout your week. Yes, so good. Well, we wanna thank you to everybody who gives yes. and to pour, who pours into this ministry. If you just watch that, like yes. Pastor was saying, that's incredible. Look at all of the things that we are doing. And we just want to give you a big hand clap too, yeah. because we matched our funds. We matched that so 4 exciting. million, which is incredible. Crazy. I mean, Crazy. Like they said, all of the <laughs> stuff that's going on in Honduras and yeah. building roofs for homes that were, um, were affected by yeah. the hurricane. I mean, all that and then some we are doing by pouring into the ministry and yeah. giving. God says, you know, bless and help the yep. widows and the yep. children. Yep. And you're doing that and yeah. your faithfulness and your giving. So we want to thank you so much. We appreciate you. Literally, you guys are so amazing. And also, we just want to invite you, if you need prayer for anything, yeah, we are anything a family. At all. And we want you to text PRAY 
to 510-510, prayer to 510-510, and there you'll be able to just get connected, send a prayer yeah. request, and we have a team of people who will be praying for you and yeah. connecting with you and just literally covering you in prayer over whatever situation yeah. you may need. So again, that's prayer to 510-510, and it'll be on the screen for you if you see it down there as well. <laughs> Yes, and then another thing we want to let you guys know about before the day ends is our Experience Israel trip. Yes. So if you've been following along and you know about the Holy Land and, and you want to walk where Jesus walked, we're yeah. going to Israel December 1st through the 10th. And you can still sign up now. It's going to be such an amazing, so amazing. anointed journey. Yeah. That's with Pastor Jensen and Sharice Franklin. Mm -hmm. You can log on to freechapel.org for more information on the trip yeah. and the itinerary, every place that you guys would be going to. Yeah. So if you're interested, again, freechapel.org, Experience Israel Trip, yes. December 1st through the 10th. It's going to be powerful. Yes, be sure you check that out. And also, we just want to invite you guys to invite somebody to watch yes. online. You know, this service was so powerful, and I yeah. know the 11 a.m. is going to be just as powerful. Yeah. So if this impacted Tell you, send come. this to a friend. Send this in your family. Group message to maybe that friend that you're trying to get to come to church with yeah. you one day. Go family ahead and member. send literally anyone Parent. who comes to your mind. Go ahead and send this link to your friend so that they can get empowered just as yeah. we were this morning let's not be stingy with it but let's share it with people <laughs> spread out his yes presence. and also we just i just want to take a minute we just want to take a minute and just thank you guys for being a part of our yeah. online family pastor was bragging on y'all this morning and we just want to seal it with some bragging <laughs> yep. before we go on with our day but so you guys are so, so special much. thank you guys for taking the time out of your day yeah. to tune in to help us to partner with us all with our resources with our time with our prayers whatever it may be yeah. you guys are so special and we love all of you guys so much. Yes. But before we go on with our Sunday, Mel, you want to close us out with some prayer? Absolutely. Awesome. God, we just thank you for who you are. Yes. And we just thank you for your Holy Spirit that is present and available at any given second in yeah. time. And we just pray that your word doesn't return void, God, that it just reaches out into every person yeah. who is watching this morning. We just pray that you touch them where they are, yeah. that you fill their room wherever they're watching, God. We pray your Holy Spirit over them. Yes, and I pray that that you just fill them like never before, God, and that they feel your presence like never before on a deeper yeah. level, God. We pray for answers to things that they've been, yeah. been praying about and wondering about, God. We just pray for confirmations yes, to Jesus. be taking place today and for an extra anointing and touch of your Holy Spirit yes, today. In Jesus. Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. Love you guys see so you much. Next we'll see week. you later.